Hi, my name is Yomi Kasali. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Impact Today Telecast. Listen, I'm sure you'll be blessed today. Get your family and friends to join you, and I will see you after this time. But wait a minute. The Bible says to us in James chapter 1, verse 21, it says, lay aside all naughtiness and superfluity. And it says, receive with meekness the engrafted word. I'm trusting God has received with meekness today. The life will be blessed. Be blessed. I'll see you again. Only the truth can set us free. John chapter 2. I'll read from verse 12. And these, after this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen, sheep, doves, and changers of money sitting. Please note that. And when he had made a scourge or small, small cords, he drove or he chased them all out of the temple. He chased them out of the temple. And the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. And he said to them, The soul does take these things ends. Note verse 16. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. <sighs> a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house has consumed me. Father, we pray that your will and your will alone is what we'll do. We ask that you baptize us with fire. Let us be zealous for you and you alone. Let your zeal heat us up. We don't want to heat your zeal up. Let's be consumed with fire. Fire from above to work for you alone. And not to work for gold, mammon, or silver. We consecrate this body, this house, this physical house, and our mobile houses unto you and you alone. Take the glory. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. This is a very popular passage of scriptures. And more importantly because over the last 15-16 years I've preached on this message a couple of times. To chase them out. But the emphasis is not on the physical house or what Jesus did. But I told you last week that Jesus from that passage and other passages, don't forget it's the Father's business we're doing, told us about three houses. Three times Jesus used the phrase, my Father's house, my Father's house, my Father's house. The first house was a physical structure, which I explained to you last week. It was called a temple. It was a physical temple built by Herod. For 46 years they built it. And Jesus in Matthew 24 prophesied that that building will collapse. And that took place 40 years after Jesus came and left. AD 70. A Roman general called General Titus walked and drove into Jerusalem to quench or to, to crush a rebellion by the zealots. He crushed the rebellion and he destroyed the temple, the physical temple and uh, brought it down. Till tomorrow, the remnants, the remains of that temple is what we call the Wailing Wall in Israel. And I've been there a couple of times. I have my pictures praying on the Wailing Wall. The, the little bit of it. They, they built a little more. They, they built it more. You know, but the real old wall that was destroyed, was a little bit like a fence of what Jesus prophesied will come down crumbling. And the truth is that wall actually came down crumbling. But Jesus carried out something that is very instructive. Jesus, our Lord and Master, went into that temple and chased those that commercialized God's work. He chased them out of that physical structure called the temple. And he said, this shall be called a house of prayers. But you have made it a den of thieves. A 
cried out for criminals. And I told you from that passage, that was carried out by zeal. Watch me. And I told you that Jesus also said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. To tell you the second temple that Jesus, the second thing that Jesus referred to as temple is our mobile temple. Our human bodies. And Apostle Paul said that to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 2 Corinthians chapter 6 as well. That know ye not, verse 19 of 1 Corinthians 6, that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. When he was speaking against fornication and adultery, he said, how can you put your body to be joined with an harlot? By the way, the church then was quite promiscuous. The people going to church were also doing prostitution. So that was, was very bad. It was very bad. So Apostle Paul had to condemn that illicit act. It's bad. How can you? Don't you know that if you are joined to the halot, you are one? In verse 16, it says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Many people will not make it to the heavenly temple because of the way they, would, they used their mobile temple. And when I say that, what comes to the mind of a traditional Christian is fornication and adultery. Oh, that's not the only thing that defiles this temple. For Christ was speaking against desecrating. When you desecrate the temple. And he felt when they took money to that place, they were what? Desecrating the temple. Oh, by the way, it was not a lottery they were doing in the physical temple. It was money. That sounds like what we all do today. Sell a moment. Pause. You missed that. It wasn't prostitution or high lottery or fornication that they were doing physically in the physical temple. It was simply what you call commerce. Commerce. So, so could it be that commerce can desecrate the temple? Oh, yes. Commercial activities, merchandise in the anointing. For sale. Anointing for sale. But, but that was what he did physically. But I started to think deeply because I'm a thinker. How do I teach people about the temple of the Holy Ghost? Because 90% of those here present today believe that they are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes or no? But what if I say it's not true? That would be the problem. You have to understand it by what Jesus said in John chapter 2. And we're going to go into, it, into deeper details. The first thing Christ said was, this house is dedicated to God. We're looking at two words, dedication and consecration. Dedication and consecration. For if you defile that temple, it means you have just desecrated what was consecrated to something. Do you get a point now? Did you get a point now? So if I do not consecrate my temple for the Holy Ghost, how can I say this is the temple of the Holy Ghost? How can I say that? How can I say I am the temple of the Holy Ghost when I have not consecrated my temple or dedicated my temple to the Holy Ghost? How can I say it is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Oh, the fact that I attend a physical temple does not make me a mobile temple. If you see Christians running from prayers, run. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. When you struggle to pray, we need to check if you're a temple. Dagon in 1 Samuel chapter 5 had a temple, a house dedicated to that idol called Dagon. Remember? And so when the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant in 1 Samuel chapter 5 verse 2, they took the Ark of the Covenant into the temple of Dagon. And Dagon, the idol, was the massive, big, tall. So the following day they came, they found that that idol had bowed down to the Ark of the Covenant. Because there was a bigger God here. They said, oh, maybe it was a mistake. They pulled it up again. The following day they came, the priest noticed the head was cut off, the hands cut off, the chip. Everything was chopped around. And they fell flat before the Ark of the Covenant. So they knew that this Ark is a bigger one than this idol. They didn't watch me watching. They didn't convert the house to the house of the Ark. They simply took the Ark outside the house. Do you know how many times people have taken God out of their lives? Because they don't want to change. Acts 19 
verse number 24 to 30. There was a temple dedicated to worship Dagon. Uh, Ephesus, Diana is there. In fact, this is where I'm going to stop. Look at this. I will stay here. A certain man named Demetrius, a silver smith, watch me, which makes silver shrines. Those things you sell, they make money. For Diana brought no small gain, commerce, money. Can you see money again? To the craftsmen, those that were doing the same business. They were doing all this business to make money in the name of who? Diana. Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft, oh God, ah, I wish I could preach. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We made our wealth. Oh God. I will te- we make money here. I will teach you how to know whether you are the temple of the Holy Ghost using that scripture. How you make your money where you spend your money. Just me who you're dedicated to. Before you call a place the temple of a being, the being must be living there. Does he dwell there? If I come in, oh, let me change it. Visitors, if you read that passage, he said, those all over the world that come to the temple of Diana, when they come here and knock on the door, they know who they have come to ask after. Are you getting it? When you come to my house, I won't tell you where it is. You knock on the door. You say, is reverend around? They'll say, yes, you are in reverend's house. If you go to next door neighbor, they'll say, no, he doesn't live here. His house is there. The first way, that's what God said in Exodus 25 verse 8. Let them build me a tabernacle that I may dwell amongst them. Dwell. He didn't say, visit the fact that some of you have received divine visitations is not me God is dwelling in your place. He doesn't live there. He has visited your temple a few times. He has healed you a few times. He's helped you a few times. But you are not the temple of the Holy Ghost. How do you mean, Reverend? Because when I come knocking, I'm not expecting him to be there. You too know he doesn't live there. Self-worship is there, not God. He doesn't live there. He doesn't own that body. He doesn't own it. It's not his house. He's been there a couple of times, but he doesn't live there. He doesn't dwell there. And, and, and you have not consecrated or dedicated the thing to him. Because you, you have to consciously consecrate your temple. Consciously dedicate your body. They say, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I sanctify this to you and you alone. He will not forcefully come and live in you. You have to consecrate your temple to him. You have to say, this is, let this be the temple of the Holy Ghost. I consecrate my mobile temple unto him. Like they physically dedicated a building to Diana. Physically dedicated a building to who? Dagon. You must physically. And to also God of Israel. When they build that temple, Solomon said, we dedicate this unto you and you alone. When people come in here and pray to you, Lord, open the heavens and hear their cry. So that building was dedicated to God. When you buy a land, you know, when I go to pray for houses, I enjoy praying when my members build new houses. And there's a prayer I pray every time I go to houses. Because I've seen that, I used to see that, that phrase that says, Christ is the unseen guest in this house. The thing breaks my heart. So I pray, I say, no, let Christ be the host and the owner, not a guest. For you put guests in the guest room. So imagine Christians putting even their physical houses and making Christ a guest. How much more your, your mobile temple? When I enter my house, I fling my shoe this way, my other shoe that way, I sit where I get there. I enjoy because it is my home. How do I know it's my home? I feel at home. I'm relaxed. When I go to a student's house, I sit like a pastor because I'm a guest there. When the temple is not consecrated to him or dedicated to him. How can you call yourself the temple of the Holy Ghost? It is beyond doctrinal belief. I'm speaking practical belief. It's not. You are not. Because when I look inside, what I see is greed, avarice. 
taking control. Commerce. So how can God be in there and you say he rules in there when you know the person that calls the shot is my mom, not God. 90% of your decisions are taken in consultation with mammon, not with the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? You consult him in your heart. Should I greet him or not? And mammon says no. You say why? He says he's poorer than you. So you choose your friends based on how wealthy they are. That's not the Holy Ghost. I can't be the temple of the Holy Ghost. You say, should I serve in church or not? Mammon says no. Why? He said because they are bigger. You make your decisions after consulting Mammon, not consulting the Holy Ghost. And yet, you tell me you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. How? When that temple is not dedicated to him, when he is not dwelling there and feeling at home the way you feel at home in your houses. Because I know how I feel in my house. I know how I feel in my house. There is no place in my house I don't enter. Because it is my... Hey, is there a place you can enter your own house? Is there a place you can enter your house? It's not your house. And the Holy Ghost enter everywhere in your house. Tell me the truth. This telecast was made possible by partners of Abacot Ministries International. If you would like to be a partner, kindly visit www.yamikasali.com forward slash become a partner. Fill in the form and you will receive a partner's gift. Thank you for watching Impact today. Thank you for watching Impact today. I hope you have been blessed by today's message. Listen to me. As you know, I love feedback a lot. I'd love to hear from you. I would appreciate it. If you have questions, you have comments, you'd like to let me know how you've been blessed today. My email address is right now on the screen. Please email me directly. Send me a mail and I'd like to hear from you personally. We also have trained counselors behind the scenes right now waiting to hear and to pray with you. Should you have the prayer request, the prayer point, let us would like to pray with you. All you have to do is call the number on your screen right now. If you're watching me right now, you want to do something else beyond getting in touch with us. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. That will gladden my heart and that will make God happy. Can you do me a favor? Close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. If you want to give your life to Christ, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today to surrender my life to you, to make you Lord and Master and Savior of my soul. Lord, help me. Take me and wash me clean with your blood and sanctify my soul. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Listen, we have trained counselors right now, like I said earlier on, waiting to lead you through your faith journey. They would like to hear from you as well. Pick and call the numbers right now. Just dial those numbers and you will indeed hear from us. We also have a salvation kit. That's meant for those who give their life to Christ and Christ alone. We have a salvation gift pack. We would like to rush them to your place. You may need to drop for us your number, your address, so we can reach you. My partners would love to also hear from you. We have many churches across the street that you can also worship in. Go look for a Bible-believing church. If you gave your life to Christ and you start your journey of faith. Thank you once again for being out there. I'll see you again on this channel same time next week. Bye-bye and God bless. Till I see you, continue to make an impact in your community and your society.